Yesterday, 300 quality assurance workers at a video game studio owned by Microsoft successfully unionized. And what makes this story so exciting and so different is that through their efforts to organize the workplace and form a union, Microsoft didn't step in and tried to bust their efforts. Now, the union drive took place at ZeniMax Media, which is a video game publisher that Microsoft acquired in 2021. ZeniMax is behind massive video game franchises such as the Elder Scrolls, Fallout, and Doom. Now, though testing video games might sound like a super fun job and not at all grueling, that is actually not the case. It is a difficult job, it is grueling, and they're not playing video games for fun. They're doing it specifically to find you know, coding errors or glitches, things that mm -hmm. they need to fix. It's quality control. Um, now, earlier this year, More Perfect Union spoke to quality assurance workers at Raven Software about what it's like to do their jobs. Why don't we take a quick look at that? I worked on Black Ops 3, I was night shift. I remember the lights would turn off after 9 p.m. and then we would get like yelled at for spilling creamer. We would work 14 hour shifts at one point trying to get Black Ops 3 out. It was just insane, like it felt like a dungeon. Especially when I was working in VR games. As a QA tester, you would be in the headset anywhere from four to eight hours a day with essentially two small TV screens blaring into your eyes. It's worth noting that VR manufacturers actually suggest players only stick to like 30 to 60 minutes a day. I personally have long-term you know, eye vision damage from that experience. We had been frustrated about pay for a long time. We had several testers who were on food stamps. Like we had people who were qualifying for, for SNAP. It was, you know, frustrating to know that we were putting out this game that makes upwards of $5 million a day and couldn't see any of that return. So, I mean, look, I, I'm an underground gamer, except I'm not, I'm kidding. Uh, but I can't imagine doing any job for 14 hours a day on a regular basis and not losing my mind. Um, and I also can't imagine putting on a VR headset for four to eight hours a day. I feel no. like I'd get sick within the first five minutes. Yeah, a regular monitor for you know, nine, 10, 12 hours a day is absolutely dreadful. The, my brief experiment with VR earlier this year it took far less than an hour for me to get very sick. Right. Um, now obviously, you're not gonna make it even a week if you're a person who is constitutionally incompatible with VR like I am. But regardless, you can't have those screens. It, first of all, it gets hot mm -hmm. if the screen's right there. Um, but just the, the countless hours, the obviously low pay, it's important work because if that job isn't done well and the game is a buggy mess, then it's gonna get review bombed when it comes out and it's gonna do terrible. Like they do a very important job yes. and they deserve to be compensated fairly for it. They deserve to be compensated and they deserve better workplace protections and conditions. Now, the video you just saw again, wasn't um, the, the company that just unionized, it, it was Raven Software. But let's go back to ZeniMax and uh, what they're demanding through their union. They want better pay, they want fewer hours, which I think is reasonable considering the long hours they're working, flexible remote work policies and better promotion policies. Now, again, unlike what we've seen with other companies like Starbucks, for instance, Microsoft went in a different direction and they decided against trying to union bust. And we can only speculate as to why, I'm too pessimistic to just except that they want to be good to their workers, right? Mm -hmm. I think there might be something else at play. I think it's overall great that they didn't step in and try to union bust. Um, but Autumn Mitchell, who's an employee who was involved in the unionization effort said that Microsoft's decision to remain neutral was incredibly important. It's been an incredible weight lifted off our shoulders, she says. The union election, by the way, wasn't even conducted through the National Labor Labor Relations Board. Um, oftentimes when things get heated between the employees and the company, grievances are filed with the NLRB, they step in and, and they kind of oversee the process to make sure that these uh, employers aren't union busting. Instead, the company held a union vote by allowing employees to either sign a union authorization card or vote anonymously through an online platform. The workers unionized with the Communications Workers of America, CWA, and that's all great. I mean, I'm really, really happy for them. Bigger picture, 
it's great news that we're seeing more companies and more workers across the country attempt to unionize, succeed in unionizing. Again, I've said this a million times, I'll say it again. It's like the one ray of hope I see in this terrible political climate. Um, but if you're asking why Microsoft was so accommodating to ZeniMax and, and their efforts to unionize, well, the concessions to union organizers came as the company has been trying to placate antitrust regulators who are scrutinizing its roughly $70 billion proposed acquisition of the video game maker Activision Blizzard. It seems there may have been some sort of quid pro quo between the CWA and Microsoft. The CWA had voiced reservations about Microsoft's acquisition of activism. Activision, my bad, but it said the neutrality agreement addressed its concerns and the union's president later met with the chair of the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission in October of 2022 to urge support for the deal. Huh. But ultimately that deal fell through, mm -hmm. it didn't work, it was blocked and and I think that's good. I think these yeah. antitrust laws are important, I think these mergers are disastrous. If the merger had happened, it would have been, um, uh, it would make Microsoft the third largest gaming firm behind Sony and Tencent. Uh, yeah. Not, yeah, Tencent. Yeah, already big and like being both the platform manufacturer and one of the largest software manufacturers for it. Like it's not unprecedented. Nintendo, you know, is like that. But yeah, I'm glad that that deal didn't go through. Um, and great for the workers. Uh, I'm sure that that was probably a part of it. It's also, it's hardly a season where if you do crush a unionization effort, you're not gonna get noticed for it. Maybe they're trying to avoid a bit of the bad press. Mm. And in particular in the video game industry, there have been some companies whose reputations have been absolutely tanked over the last couple of years. They'd like probably like to not have that happen to them. So in any event, good for the workers. And by the way, my bad. So uh, the deal isn't dead yet. They're still trying to do this acquisition. Um, so we'll see where it goes. For now though, I believe it's been blocked, uh, it's in limbo. Uh, so FTC filed to block, but it hasn't successfully blocked it yet. It's in limbo right now. So just mm -hmm. wanna clarify that um, because there's still some possibility that sure. there would be a, a merger there. All right, but good news for the workers, I'm happy about that. Positive news, doesn't happen often. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.